I, well, I'm the Wayne County Commissioner for Dearborn and Allen Park. Uh, I'm also the chairman of the Wayne County Commission. And I've been chairman for eight years. Um, I've been on the Wayne County Commission for 14 years. And before that, I was a state representative for Dearborn for six years. Government is communication. And I've always thought it very important to communicate with the people that I represent. So I write, uh, I send newsletters with informing people on what's going on in the county. But I write them myself. I don't have a staff that, that, that does it. So it's personal. As a state representative, I had great success for Dearborn uh, for our schools. Um, I was able to change the School Aid Act in order to increase the funding for Dearborn schools uh, for the at-risk programs, which are the programs uh, for kids who are at risk of falling behind. So uh, reading recovery programs, uh, some English as a second language programs. I managed to get Dearborn two and a half million dollars more every year uh, for about 10 years. Um, also, um, for the community I represent, the Arab American and Muslim community, when I was a state representative, I passed what's known as the Halal Food Act. Uh, the Halal Food Act uh, simply provides consumer protection so that it's against state law for someone to advertise food as halal if it is not. I was instrumental in raising the maximum unemployment benefit. It had been frozen for about seven years at $300 a week for people on unemployment. Um, we got that raised to around $365 a week, which was a big help to, uh, uh, to working families. I was Dearborn State Representative during the, the World Trade Center terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, um, which was a horrifying and, and at that point unbelievable act. Um, and I knew that I had a responsibility immediately to protect my community. So what I did right after 9-11 was that I arranged a meeting in Lansing between legislators and their staff and members of our local Muslim community. So that uh, in, in an informal setting, we had lunch and we had a, it was a big conference room. Um, was my fellow state representatives and their staff could, could get to actually meet a Muslim, to actually ta talk about the religion and talk about how the attacks that happened were not representative of Islam. And during my time as chairman, um, I established the county's first ever ethics ordinance. Uh, there was no ethics ordinance in Wayne County before where we had a set standard of behavior that was allowable and not allowable. And then we set up a board of ethics in order to enforce the ethics ordinance. But mainly, the eight years that I have been chairman of the Wayne County Commission have been eight very tumultuous years in Wayne County. We had the, uh, I became chairman in uh, January of 2011. And um, the, uh, the, the previous administration, uh, with, when Bob Vacano was county executive, um, ran into some real problems. They had FBI investigations, they had people arrested, um, there were some scandals, and, there were, and on top of all of that, we had the housing market collapse of 2008 and 2009, so our tax revenues were falling through the floor. So Wayne County was falling into a fiscal emergency, and we had a, a leadership emergency in the administration. So as Wayne County Commission Chairman, I thought it was my responsibility to pick up um, and fill in the gaps where leadership was needed. Um, Wayne County has regained its financial footing. Uh, I mean, we're, we're still, we have less revenue now than we did 10 years ago because of housing values. But Wayne County um, is out from under the consent agreement from the state and um, our bond rating is going up. Uh, so things are very much improved. And then we have the jail project that has been lingering for several years now. Um, just at this point in time, we have an arrangement um, with uh, the private company, Rock Ventures, Dan Gilbert's company, um, to build a new justice complex in connection with the county, um, which we think is a good solution. There was a time when, when uh, Rock Ventures and Dan Gilbert wanted to buy the, the property where the jail sat on Gratiot, half-built, to put a soccer facility there uh, and bring Major League Soccer uh, franchise into Detroit. Um, they've abandoned that idea, but they're still hoping for a franchise, and they would play at Ford Field. They would, they would reconfigure the football stadium for soccer, uh, which, would, uh, which would make sense to get a, multiple uses out of it. I'm running for the state senate district, and the, the, the breadth of issues that we deal with on the state level 
are somewhere where I think I can have a positive impact. Now the district, uh, the House, the Senate district, number three, is Dearborn, Melvindale, and a sizable portion of Detroit. My roots are in Detroit. Um, I was born in Detroit. I spent my first five years in Detroit. Uh, I was born on the east side around Seven Mile and Dequinder. When I was five years old, my family moved to Dearborn and um, I still had connections in Detroit because my mother's family um, still lived in the, the east side around Shane, uh, Ferry, that area. Um, so uh, you, can't, you can't not be part of Detroit if you live in Dearborn. I have no doubt that I, could, that I can and will represent Detroit uh, very well. It's not a training ground. We need people with experience in the state senate. People have to realize that this race will be decided in the primary election on August 7th. August 7th is the day that this is going to be decided. A lot of people don't vote in August. They think they'll wait for November. This race is all about August 7th. There are several priorities, uh, but they all involve investment. We need to invest more in our public schools, and we need to invest more in our teachers. Um, they, they've been trying to mess with teacher pensions and um, don't show the teachers the respect and love that they need. So we need to invest in our roads and infrastructure. And this winter showed us that um, more than ever before. What's also very important is the formula that the state uses to distribute that money. It's called Public Act 51, and it was established in 1951. And the roads up north, the one mile of roadway up north that has two lanes and little traffic, gets the same formula allocation as, um, as you have for a six-lane highway down here that has all the heavy trucks and everything. That's not equitable. <laughs>